um, February 15th meeting, the Oklahoma City Water Utilities Trust will be in order. The first item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes for the February 8th meeting. So moved. Second. Motion and a second to approve the minutes. Are there comments, questions, additions, corrections? Voting, please. Minutes are approved. Next item is the consent docket. Number of items. Move the consent docket subject to individual consideration. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the consent docket. Are there matters to be considered individually? Hearing none, but, uh, voting please. Consent docket's approved. Next item is the plans and specifications. One item. Is that under the consent docket? Concurrence docket, I'm sorry. The next item is the concurrence docket, item four. Second. Motion and a second to approve the concurrence docket. Do we need to talk about either one of these items separately? I have a question, uh, Chairman. On the 4A, it's a, a, a lowering of a water main, northwest 164th May Avenue to Pennsylvania Avenue. And uh, this is a decrease uh, in the change order. Is, is this project ongoing and is it, uh, will it delay the street widening project at all? Uh, yes, sir, it is ongoing and it, while unfortunately there are sometimes delays caused by utility relocations, to my knowledge this did not delay the project. Good. Thank you very much. Any other questions on the, on the concurrence docket? Are there any other questions? Hearing none, voting please. Concurrence docket's approved. Next item is item five. It's an easement, acceptance of a permanent easement. I'll move approval. Second. Motion and a second to approve the easement under item five. Questions, comments? Voting please. Easement is accepted. Next item is item six. Four reports. Will we accept the reports? Second. Motion and a second to receive the reports. Are there matters to be discussed separately on each any of them uh, uh, mr chairman your financial advisor dennis whaley is here to visit with you briefly about item d if that's acceptable to you that's fine good afternoon i'm dennis whaley with public financial management should have a copy of the presentation um, i will be brief i won't go through the details of all 21 pages um, if you'll go to page four, we did a bond sale in early February to refund $64 million of commercial paper that you had outstanding. And then on page five talks about the rating presentations and the results of those um, rating presentations. You have a AAA rating from S&P and a AA1 rating from Moody's. A few of the highlights that S&P cited was your large service area, strong finances, high debt service coverage, that you are meeting your future water needs, which is very significant because many water utilities throughout the country are struggling to meet future water needs. And you have done a good job of having foresight to uh, look ahead to what this community will need over the next 10, 20, 30 years. Moody's talked about the healthy economy, which a lot of people can't uh, can't say, and, and Oklahoma City has a very healthy economy, uh, well-managed operations, and that your CIP is manageable. We go to page six. We did uh, had two days of uh, for the bond sale. We sold retail on January 11th, had institutional pricing on the 12th, and closed on February the 9th. Page seven shows the coupons and yields for the bonds we sold. Uh, the TIC or the average, basically the average borrowing rate was 4.87%, which as we go forward and I show you is, is very good considering market conditions. On page nine, you'll have a copy of the, of the yield curve and you'll notice that municipal rates have moved higher since the fall of 2010. This has been caused by 
There's a lot of BAB selling or Build America bond sales late in 2010 because the program was going away on December 31st. Also had some improvements, general improvements in the overall economy. And we've had several, but one municipal bond analyst in particular who has said some negative things about the municipal bond market and that person's been in the news quite a bit lately. Uh, page 10, one thing that did work for you, you noticed that huge volume in the, at the end of 2010, but in January volume was very low and that worked in your favor for your, for your bond sale. Performance, going to page 12, you had five underwriters on this transaction. BOSC was the senior manager. Wells Nelson was your co-senior manager and three co-managers. You'll notice that you had a significant number of orders, $127 million in orders for $68 million in bonds. A lot of interest in your bonds. And you'll also notice that uh, you, know, you had orders from, from all of your managers. And it's not surprising that Bank of Oklahoma would get the most orders. Most of the institutional orders would go through the book running manager. So that's, that's typical. And then on page 13, you'll notice the allocations to the various managers. Um, everybody received some bonds, and uh, I think we had an, a very good sale, all things, all things considered, in a market where rates were rising. As a matter of fact, rates were rising uh, over the several days that you were selling bonds. We were able to help hold yields constant and even uh, lower the yields on several maturities while the overall market was moving in the other direction. I think that sells, says a lot about the strength and stability of the Oklahoma City Water Trust. Uh, briefly on page 15, we extended the letter of credit for the commercial paper program to July 31 of uh, 2013. Um, it's been a little bit slow going, but we're still working on increasing the size of the letter of credit to 150 million. Page 16. Uh, although we talked earlier about the blue line, long-term rates going higher, short-term rates have stayed very low. Page 17 just reiterates that. You'll notice uh, going from the bottom line to the top, that goes September of 10, December 31 of 10, and February 4 of 11. Although short-term rates have stayed very low, we've had a significant steepening of the yield curve. Page 18, uh, this was done prior to the takeout of the, um, of the commercial paper. Uh, we currently have $1 million in uh, CP outstanding. But the thing to notice here is your borrowing rates in the commercial paper program, 28 basis points, 30 basis points, extremely low borrowing rates. Uh, the following pages are just information that I've, I've uh, given in the past, uh, just shows when your letter of credit expires, the summary of uh, your tax exempt program, and then your outstanding long-term debt. Um, overall, outstanding bond sale, and uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions? <clears throat> Just a curiosity question, Dennis. What percentage was retail versus uh, the? Uh, Gosh, that's a good question. Um, institutional. I'd have. To, I think it was like we sold thirty or forty percent of it retail on the first day, and then we went. And it may have been higher than that. It may have been higher than that, but it was a significant portion of retail Thank you. investors. No questions, I guess. Thank okay. you. Thank you. So we have a motion and a second to receive the reports on item six. So move. Voting, please. Reports received. Item seven, items for individual consideration. The first one is item A, the ratification of the trust payments. Move approval. Second. Motion and a second to approve item A. Comments? Voting, please. Item seven A is approved. Item seven B. Resolution authorizing municipal council's office to initiate an eviction proceeding under the Oklahoma Residential Landlord Tenant Act. I guess that's at Kitchen Lake, right? Move we adopt the resolution. Motion and a second to adopt the resolution. Other questions, comments? Voting, please. 
Resolution is adopted. Item 7C, receive Turnpike Authority Utility License. Move approval. Second. Motion and a second to adopt item 7C. Comments? Voting, please. Resolution is approved, or the license is received, I guess. Next item is a resolution, item 7D. Resolution to purchase a multi-trode <coughs> pump control system. Move approval. I'll second. Motion and a second to approve item 7D. Comments? Right at 70. 70? Yes. And, and, and were these selected for any particular reason for new pumps? That there are more critical, more susceptible to potential overflows or um, it's a variety of things. It can be uh, less capacity, for example, no Power backup generator at that location, um, uh, less overall wet well capacity to hold the flow but in the interim. They're, they're going through them one by one, prioritizing based on most likely environmental or community impact if they don't have data. You get complaints from the, the, their, the neighbors, housing conditions near these places as far as their operations is concerned? Um, yes, from time to time. Some facilities are better than others. Some are fully underground um, and uh, they look like a uh, small substation site. Uh, others are more obvious depending upon the individual when the structure was built and where it is. Um, most of the time we get requests for screening of operations. Well, we do a pretty good job of noise control generally unless, again, it's, there's something external, a pump that's running on the outside, which we don't have many of those anymore. Um, but, but the key thing is make, make it look less industrial uh, without creating, I, I think another issue for, for neighbors uh, is they don't want an unvisited facility, a facility that doesn't have people there all the time, uh, to, be, to look abandoned either, and so the right mix of landscaping, but ability to see through the site to make certain that um, there's any hanky-panky going on inside or the kind of neighborhood issues we have. Thank you. <coughs> Further comments? We have a motion and a second to approve the item. Voting, please. Items approved. Last item on the agenda is item 7E which is a presentation and approval and amendment to the Enterprise Services contract with Kubra. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Weingart's going to help us with this issue. Kubra is our bill print and mail contractor. Go ahead and go to the second page, Lee. Mr. Chairman and trustees, uh, this next item right here is a, is a three proposed three-year renewal to the existing contract, which was a three-year contract initial term. We selected Kubra as a part of an RP process previously and had in place the ability to do annual renewals thereafter. There are a number of projects that we need to uh, proceed on uh, that we think will take some period of time and uh, it's worthy of a three-year renewal to conduct that work. Uh, the primary services will be the continuation of the existing printing and mailing function and the electronic email notification process that we have in place along with some uh, proofing processes that we do prior to mailing our bills. Uh, one of the uh, things that has happened with Kubra over the life of our past three year period is they have bought up a lot of their competitors. One of their competitors was in Capel, Texas, and it takes about three days for mail to, to reach our customers when it's mailed from the current location in Nashville, and it's proposed that they move their printing and mailing function to, uh, to Capel, Texas, next to Dallas, and it will reduce our average day time by one full day. And so that's one of the initiatives that they'll be pursuing in addition to others. Uh, Go to the next slide, page three. Covers the current services. The uh, document design services, we planned on uh, 
doing a bill redesign during the first three-year term, but with other initiatives, we didn't quite get to that. So that's included again in the renewal term, thinking that we'll be able to get to a new bill design as a part of that process. Uh, Cubra also performs a presentation of our bill image to banks and credit unions for people that go to their banks and credit unions online services to pay their bills. They use something called a bill consolidator service. The last bullet on page three there, you'll see that. That's what that is, where you go to the bank and pay your bills. They can present our bill image right there on their own websites. Uh, next slide. Possible future services Included in the past contract was the option for us to obtain other services that Cuba offers their clients, and we retained those possibilities in our renewal contract that the trust could choose to take on those if it chose to do so. One uh, new thing is the intelligent mail barcode. The post office, has, that's a new program for the post office. They want uh, large mailers like us to move to an intelligent barcode to get the most preferable lowest rate for postage. And that will be one of the initial uh, initiatives that we will want to pursue to, to get the best lowest cost rate for postage. Uh, included is also the, the possibility of moving to the full electronic bill presentment and payment module. Right now we have the email notification, but you have to go back to OKC.gov to view your bill image. This process uh, that lots of utilities use is we actually send you a PDF of your bill. You can open it up right there and pay it right there without having to enter in your account code information and, and such, and you can see your bill right there. It's easier for the customer to do that. That's one of the things that we could move to with this renewal contract. Uh, they, they have a one-time fee-based convenience fee program that they had in the past contract. We've left that language in if, if you wanted to use it at some point in the future. It's not proposed that we'll do anything with it right now. It's just there if we want to use it. An another initiative is to move to the iMobile messaging process. And you'll see how uh, on, the, on the screen there where you have a, an iPhone and you, can, and you can go into that and look at your bill, look at your account status, pay your bill right there on the iPhone. That is a very popular uh, feature now that uh, many people use. And as we want to stay uh, up current with what our customers are expecting in their ability to, to pay their bill, that is a function we could choose to use. Electronic data interchange. Federal agencies want us to have this, but we currently do not, uh, so they can uh, readily pay their bills through the electronic data interchange. And that is a function that they can provide to us also. Uh, I mentioned the bill redesign. They have options there. Uh, the next part is improved bill and letter proof processes. The process that, that we currently use was developed for us as a part of our go live for SAP. Uh, in that process, they've learned that that's now a unique opportunity for them. And uh, they've enhanced it, where we can do additional proofing capabilities, uh, checking and, and things like that. And so uh, they're expanding that system, that proofing ability for us. Online balance and payment improvements. One of the things we've been working with IT and Kubra on is the ability to have more real-time information in OKC.gov so our customers get instantaneous updated information, uh, most current information at all times and they have the ability to work with that as a part of their some of their work and we'll be working with IT to work on that as a future project. Uh, and with that we'd recommend that we approve the renewal. A question Mr. Chairman. On these possible future services you mentioned, uh, the electronic bill presentation payment, the use of a mobile system, are those close to being realized? Are we actually going to do those sort of things or just let a list of future things that we might consider? At, at this point, uh, we have not kicked off a project to initiate any of these activities on the possible future services. They are just available to us should we choose to do so. Okay, is there any, of, any serious discussion of doing these sort of things? We, would, we, we believe that there's, it's fruitful for us to consider 
uh, some of them in the future, especially the intelligent mail barcode. But we, are, we also owe Auckland some information about which we recommend and, and which we don't, selecting the critical few rather than the many. Because, you know, they, these are services that we, we, we want to consider, but a lot of op operations already provide these kind of things, the electronic bill paying. I'm not sure how many use mobile phones, but apparently that's a thing that is coming on rapidly. Uh, and I, it, would, it would seem like that it would be to our benefit to get as much of this done electronically to eliminate the paper flow, uh, and the bookkeeping associated with it, like the computers do it all. And uh, there would be, it seemed like there would be some savings that we could realize there, in addition to providing our customers with some service. What, what percent of our <coughs> customers presently use automatic debiting? About 20,000 accounts, about 10 percent. So that really hasn't grown that much. Back, no. Back when we kicked it off, it no. was like an 8 percent. 45 percent of our customers pay their bills electronically, but only 10 percent of our customers are using the reoccur recurring ACH process. And that's because of all of the availability of credit cards, debit cards, and one-time pay. So this initiative where you go to electronic uh, bill presentment payment would be, com combined with the convenience fee, would be aimed at moving people to the electronic bill presentment and the recurring ACH, the least cost option for us. We might want to uh, consider doing some more public relations in that area. Uh, that just seems... I think it'd be interesting to know what what OG and E and ONG and and some of the others have uh, along that line as far as what type of participation rate they have in that, those areas. I I think you'll find that electronic participation rates are not as high as you would expect, and and it seems to be consistent in the utility side. They're making major efforts all around the country now to try and drive people more and more to that because it certainly saves everybody transaction costs, but. It's amazing that it's, it's as sticky as it is. Are any of the utilities you know of uh, providing incentives to utilize these systems? Um, or disincentives? Well, or, or as Mr. Weingart is suggesting. Oh, oh, I know that, for example, ONG is recently, in the last year or so, uh, now passing through a transaction percentage fee to individuals who use a credit card as opposed to a checking account. And you're seeing some of that. Um, in looking at other utilities around the country, particularly in relation to the smart grid, just trying to get people to log in and look at consumption data on the web, um, we're finding penetration rates as low as 3, 4, 5 percent of people that will actually log in and look at information. And these are, these are for utilities that don't necessarily offer electronic payment yet. Some are getting better about getting them there, and they're learning about how to market that. So I think it's wide open, and we ought to be open to any number of options, and perhaps we ought to test different methodologies and see what works for our customers. Because the one thing is certain is that we don't know how customers are going to respond, so we ought to be open to that. I think we ought to give some consideration. Mm -hmm. This is a marketing tool to uh, split the savings, perhaps. You know, pass some of those savings on to our customers. Mm -hmm. I don't know what if we can identify what the actual savings are to the utility. If we can, then we could maybe do some kind of a, of a split on that kind of thing. Yeah, we, we have adequate data, if we chose a percentage of that, that would be pretty confident mm -hmm. with price impacts. Yeah. Uh, give me an idea of what, you, what the savings would be if you're talking about a split the savings thing. I mean, what would a, what would a person expect? to receive if you split it with them. The, the round, when we presented you the uh, convenience fee presentation mm -hmm. in November, uh, we talked about the difference between the round trip for the bill. Mm -hmm. If you use the uh, paper bill, credit, and say standard utility fee for credit card, $1.29 to $1.50, 100% mm -hmm. uh, electronic, where we do the electronic bill presentment and they pay recurring ACH in the range of 29, 30 cents. Okay? So that's the difference. The, 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 the issue you get into, though, is the cost of enabling the technology so that you can start realizing the savings right. is a material cost. 
that if you consider that cost there's a there's a, a recovery time frame so if we try to give the money back too soon then we don't have the money to develop the technologies and, and so it, it's it's all who's paying for which service they like and we have seen a significant increase in the cost for the lockbox service on a per bill unit as our number of customers mm -hmm. have gone down from right. 90 some percent used to go to lockbox right and now fewer are going to lockbox so as, as fewer right. bills go in the lockbox the cost per bills went from seven percent seven cents to twelve cents right. per unit so in order for them to afford to keep doing it they have to charge more mm -hmm. per unit they charge the same amount it's just fewer units are coming in so we we're, we're, we're seeing those changes in the market as people change the choices that they're making right. and the credit card bill you know our credit and debit card fees are above four hundred thousand dollars a year but uh, there's only about uh, I think 13 percent or something like that of our customers are paying that way and it's a very large percentage of our total costs 55 percent of our total bill payment costs are going to credit cards 13 percent of our customers mm -hmm. so it, it's it's tying up the bill presentment and recurring ACH has been the the magic bullet let's say right. that that actually that actually locks in the ability to save the money because you don't get you 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 restrict access to the account restrict electronic information mm -hmm. unless they buy in 100 percent so that both parties benefit because they don't pay for a postage stamp right we don't pay for one okay further questions or comments <clears throat> we have a motion to, uh, and a second to receive the uh, move, move approval if there's not a motion second motion and a second to receive the uh, presentation and approve the amendment voting please members approved um, that concludes the regular part of the agenda. Are there um, comments from trustees or staff from the public? Hearing none, we're adjourned.